Okay, welcome to the next in our interviews with our astronomers here at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. Uh, we're here again in the Great Equatorial Telescope next to our Victorian era 28 uh, inch uh, refracting telescope to talk to Tanya de Saudish March, uh, one of our astronomers here at the observatory. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Greg. <laughs> So Tanya is one of our planetary astronomers here at the observatory. Um, but first I'd like to talk about what got you interested in astronomy in the first place. Was it from a, a very young age? Uh, yes, actually, um, I think the earliest at least that I remember being interested in astronomy I was maybe about five or six. Um, I grew up in Macau and uh, Macau is in China and back then uh, in the early 80s, uh, yeah, 80s, uh, Macau was still quite uh, a small town, uh, and uh, which means that it had quite uh, dark skies. Uh, not, uh, it's not, it wasn't as bright as it is today. Um, and so I remember we, we would drive and we had our Sunday drives to one of the islands that are connected to Macau and uh, it was a dark sky and I remember looking up and thinking, oh, you know, that, that's quite interesting, These star, like the stars look interesting and look beautiful. And I remember asking my parents, uh, who studies stars? And my dad saying, astronomers study stars. And that just stayed in my head and I thought, oh, that's what I want to be. And I think probably around, uh, I must have been 13 or 14, that's when I decided uh, definitely I was going to study astronomy. Uh, so it, it was quite a passion from a young age. Yeah. Were there any other uh, ideas of what you might become instead of an astronomer in between those times? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, um, I, I, I've always enjoyed science, I've always been fascinated by science, and uh, where I grew up with in, uh, and amongst the Portuguese community, uh, many of the many of my friends that wanted to study science they were going into medicine. So that was something that was in the back of my mind. I have an uncle who's a, a doctor, and a son now as well. Uh, so I, I thought, oh, that that could be something. But uh, biology wasn't exactly what I was uh, really interested in. And then. Um, something completely different. I was really inter interested in architecture as well, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't draw. So, <laughs> so it's uh, so that that idea lasted for a, a few years, but uh, it wasn't something that I was particularly. Um, you know, I just didn't see. I, I don't. I didn't think I was talented for that, especially because my brother, my middle brother, is actually an architect. And when we would compare things, let's, let's just say that I wasn't didn't have the the right uh, uh, profile, creative profile <laughs> for an architect. <laughs> so, um, so I, I was always fascinated by the universe. I was always fascinated by uh, these big questions of. Uh, what is the universe and what is our place in the universe and all these things that we find in nature that uh, are just so complex and mysterious and uh, I always wanted to I, I always wanted to study that so you say by sort of 13 14 you decided an astronomer is what you were going to be um, so did you sort of start on the path towards heading to, to university at that point? Was that uh, uh, the, the aim? Yes, uh, I studied in the Portuguese system no, most of my, my school years, really. Uh, and because Macau at that time was uh, uh, was still under Portuguese administration. And uh, so I studied in the Portuguese system and basically you decide at about uh, fifth, at 15, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or 14, 15, you decide which sort of uh, area of expertise you want to follow. So you are asked to decide whether you want to follow the science, sciences, arts, uh, humanities, or for example, uh, computer science, so on. So you make that decision quite early, and then you're from that time, uh, your secondary school basically, those years are spent. Um, you do have some subjects that are general to everyone, like Portuguese language and philosophy, for example. But then you spend uh, the rest of your career in secondary school, uh, your secondary school years, uh, just studying specific um, uh, courses that relate to your studies in university. And in order to go to university, you have to pass 
those exams, specific exams to your course. So for example, astronomy would be uh, mathematics and physics and so on. So, uh, so I think it was about that time we were asked to decide anyway. So that's when I decided, okay, I'm definitely going into sciences and not arts. <laughs> so you actually, out of our group of astronomers, you're probably one of the most traveled <laughs> of a lot of us, at least based on the places that you've lived. So um, born and raised in Macau. And oh, born in Portugal. Born in Portugal, <laughs> okay, okay, so <laughs> born in Portugal, raised in Macau, and then uh, for university, you decided to move to the USA. So what caused that? What, what made you choose the US? Well, um, at the time, so this was quite a few years ago, uh, decades really. <laughs> uh, so at the time, uh, there, uh, if we were in the Portuguese system, uh, usually uh, e almost everyone would go and study uh, uh, in Portugal, uh, at the university degree in Portugal. But uh, at the time, there wasn't really an astronomy degree. And that, that's what I wanted to study. So I actually made a, a decision earlier on uh, during those secondary school years to move to a different school, to a, a Canadian school. And so at that point I decided, because I knew I wanted to study uh, either in the UK or in the States. So I decided to uh, to move so I could practice English and so on, learn uh, maths and English. And uh, my the director of the school was American and his brother was an astrophysicist. Uh, so I was very lucky. He actually was one of those uh, really influential teachers that I had that uh, helped to, to nurture this passion for science because I didn't really know anyone else uh, who wanted to study astronomy or was interested in astronomy or actually had a scientific background. And also, you know, I grew up in, uh, with that whole, uh, like everyone else, you know, watching American movies and watching and listening to, to American music. Um, and so it was, there was also that fascination of Ooh, I'm going to the USA, how adventurous, how exciting. <laughs> it was also the furthest place I could find away from my country. <laughs> well, I, grew up, I grew up in a very small town, and so I wanted something very different, basically. Uh, I also really don't like the heat, so I chose somewhere that was really cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I went for extremes, basically. But uh, I, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's the best way to make a choice about your life, but um, I went for extremes and, uh, and uh, UMass Amherst, the uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst, was one of those universities that, uh, that he uh, suggested, he recommended. That's what led me uh, to the States. I was 18 and I wanted to be by myself, <laughs> by my own, and then <laughs> study astronomy. <laughs> And so, uh, presumably, you did. Uh, was was it a, an astronomy only degree or an, a physics with? Uh, no, uh, no. Uh, the setup was a bit different than what you have here. Uh, so I did an astronomy degree. There was a, a, a physics degree, and of course, uh, those who were studying astronomy uh, uh, did uh, astronomy and physics did overlap as well as math. So I did a, a, an astronomy degree with a minor in mathematics. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in, in my university particularly, you could almost kind of draw your own degree. Uh, well, some people did actually, uh, but uh, it was quite a large university. So you could, you had to take those foundation courses and, the, 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 and specific courses in your degree, but you could really just pick and choose. So you finished your degree in the States. Um, did you stay on there to do a master's or did you come straight to the UK or what happened No, uh, my life was a bit of a zigzag after that. Well, uh, I studied, I finished my degree and uh, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to continue in astronomy. So uh, I uh, decided to move to Portugal because I had never lived in Portugal and I'm, I was born there. Uh, my mom is from Portugal, but my dad is from Macau. So I decided to spend a bit of time in Portugal to uh, uh, see, basically to make a decision as to whether I wanted to pursue, continue pursuing astronomy or not. And also to just reconnect to, uh, uh, to my roots, really. I have family there and I wanted to know them a little bit better. 
So I went to Portugal. At the time, my brothers were uh, studying here in the UK. So after a bit in Portugal, I decided that I wanted to actually come and join my brothers in the UK. Uh, I was here for a little bit and then, um, and then I decided to go back to Macau. The reason why I went back to Macau was because they were advertising a position for a planetarium astronomer. Uh, uh, well, it wasn't called a planetarium, it was a planetarium officer, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, it was for a project that, uh, that, they w that hadn't, uh, that was just starting for, uh, to build a Macau, the Macau Science Center. So they were looking for someone who had an astronomy degree who could uh, uh, speak English and Chinese and possibly Portuguese, which uh, I do. And I don't know anyone else, <laughs> at, at least at the time, who, who had all those uh, who had all those prerequisites, basically. So um, my mom sent me the, the, the job posting and I decided to, well, I was going anyway to Macau to, for, to visit them and I decided to apply for the job. And uh, I got it and that uh, kind of changed my path in life because I decided to stay there, uh, to go back to Macau, which I hadn't foreseen doing. So uh, uh, that's what led me back to Macau and that's also where I was introduced to the amazing industry that is the planetarium industry. It's quite a fantastic uh, really group of people and just way of, of, uh, of uh, communicating science that is so unique and so different from everything else. It's very different from museum work. It's a really a unique uh, medium. So um, I was working, I worked for the Macau Science Center for a few years while the, the building, while we were building really the, the, the Science Center and the planetarium. And uh, so I worked in you know, creating content mainly, and, but also lots of admin work. And then uh, I decided that actually I did want to continue exploring this uh, uh, idea of, commun of not communicating science, but educating. Uh, uh, um, well, taking it a bit of uh, going from, the, from informal education to formal education. So uh, I decided to actually change again my my career path, and uh, and uh, uh, I, I applied for a teaching position. So uh, which uh, I, as I uh, when I was in the states, um, I worked for my department for the astronomy department as a tutor, uh, uh, a student tutor. So I got the experience of tutoring other 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 students uh, who were taking astronomy 101 or physics 101, and so that was also something I was quite interested in because uh, I felt like I could actually explain these very difficult concepts to uh, to mainly students who weren't really keen on mathematics or or physics and so on. So. Uh, I, I found that I did have a talent for that and it was always in the back of my mind that that was something I wanted to explore further because my own life has been so influenced positively and negatively by teachers and I always felt that uh, mathematics uh, uh, is sometimes, uh, may, maybe more often than not, it's, uh, it's not taught in the way that actually uh, promotes science and uh, scientific thinking and sometimes is a deterrent for lots of people that could follow degrees in science but end up not doing so because they can't relate to mathematics. So I found that that was something, I, well it became something that I, I was passionate about, um, something that I continued to explore, I continued to, to tutor uh, students while I was working uh, in uh, other things, and uh, when I decided to make this jump to teaching, I also started doing uh, graduate studies in education. Um, so I did that for a few years. I did uh, 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 after I completed my master's in education. I, did, I specialized in, in mathematics education. Um, I also started exploring other things related to uh, uh, women in STEM degrees, so I did a bit of research uh, uh, on that as well. And then I decided, well, 
I've enjoyed all of these years doing all these different types of things, but my true passion is astronomy. <laughs> so uh, uh, it is astronomy. It's teaching. Uh, it's teaching. It, uh, science, really, astronomy, mathematics, whatever it may be, just teaching and communicating, really, communicating science to other people uh, to really inspire them to ask the questions that we ask. Uh, we ask them naturally because that's what we're passionate about. Uh, but uh, it's you can actually just inspire people to also follow, um, to also become curious about uh, uh, science generally and of course specifically astronomy. So that's what brought me back here to the UK where I had lived as a younger 20-something uh, year old. Uh, so <laughs> uh, about 10 years later I decided to, to come back here. Uh, it was a decision that was also, it wasn't just a professional decision or academic decision, it was also because um, uh, my, my partner at the time, uh, was not my, my, my husband, uh, he's a musician and in Macau we, there, there really wasn't a lot of space for me professionally for a couple who who one person is an astronomer and the other is a, is a it's, musician. It, it's, a, it's a somewhat unusual partner. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a it's yeah. unusual, unusual pairing. And there aren't many places in the world that have uh, industries, developed industries in those two both, fields, yeah. uh, in both fields. So when you started at the observatory, uh, you weren't in the role that you currently are, you were instead a... Astronomy presenter. Yeah, and uh, so that meant that you were still working on the planetarium, but you were presenting the shows rather than developing them. Mm -hmm. What caused you to move from mm -hmm. uh, purely a presenting role to a development role? So I was very lucky because while I was working with the Macau Science Centre, uh, not only did I have uh, my, uh, my, my boss at the time uh, was, uh, was a planetarium uh, industry uh, um, Person, well, he used to be the director of the Hong Kong Space uh, Museum. Uh, I, we also were given the opportunity to, to, to travel around the world to learn from experts in the planetarium industry. So I actually got to know lots of different planetarium around the world and people as well. Uh, that first taste of the planetarium, of working for the planetarium, was something in the back of my mind. I always, it just connected with me. I just thought, oh, that is something that I really enjoy. It combines art, which, you know, uh, <laughs> if you, remind, <laughs> you remember from our conversation earlier, I was passionate about art. Uh, uh, not necessarily a good artist, but uh, just passionate about it. I enjoy it. Um, and it combined science, science communication, art, visualization, so technology as well. Uh, lots of different components uh, and lots of different things that I was interested in. So um, when I came to the UK, I started looking right away for a job at the Royal Observatory. <laughs> And the only one that came up was the zero hours uh, astronomy presenter role. So uh, I was really, really happy that that had uh, had come through actually. And uh, and I was studying astrophysics at the time uh, as a postgraduate uh, for my postgraduate studies. So that connected quite nicely, and that led me to being part of the team, uh, or at least being in the planetarium and presenting, which was fantastic. Um, and then eventually, I uh, uh, I went on maternity leave, and uh, uh, while I was on maternity leave, uh, a position for planetarium astronomer came up, and I hadn't expected or I hadn't thought about going back to work uh, so soon uh, after having the baby, but then. Uh, well, I couldn't pass on the opportunity because I really wanted to work at the Royal Observatory Greenwich. <laughs> I really did, uh, uh, and so and so uh, uh, when that opportunity came uh, up, I applied for the role, and uh, well, and and that's it, and that, and I got it, and I was very very happy. I am still very very happy about being a planetary astronomer. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to hear. <laughs> So, what is it that you do in uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, in your role as a planetary astronomer? In uh, pre-lockdown, uh, pre-lockdown, the astronomy, uh, the astronomers in the planetarium team, uh, what we do is we maintain the planetarium. Of course, it is quite sophisticated uh, equipment. Um, 
so we have to maintain it. But of course, uh, we, uh, one of the main things we do is that we create shows. We produce the shows that uh, we show in the planetarium. And uh, that requires a little bit of uh, uh, programming and this particular uh, uh, scripting really uh, for, for uh, in that particular software that we use. Uh, and then, of course, creating visual, visual visualizations really uh, that uh, can uh, communicate the concepts that we're trying to 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 communicate <laughs> communicate the concepts that we're trying to show in the planetarium. Like everyone else, we do present uh, workshops, we present shows, we do media media stuff, we do publishing stuff, and all those little things here and there. But that has been uh, primarily what we have done producing shows, visualizations for our um, online programming. And of all of those things, what's your favorite part of working here at the observatory? Ooh. Hmm, it's difficult because I really love my job. <laughs> I really do. Uh, it, it is really, I, I think it's really rare to find uh, uh, a job where you're not just doing the same thing over and over again. Everything that we do uh, is new, almost. We, yes, we, we do the same show over and over again, but we don't have a set script. So every time you do a show, depending on what happens, you know, uh, maybe you just saw some news, some interesting news about Mars, and you want to incorporate that into the show, for example, you are allowed to do that. So uh, it, is quite in, uh, it is quite rare to have a job where it, you have a lot of different things that you're doing. It's very diverse. You don't, ju you don't just do the same thing over and over again. Uh, but also that you are allowed to input, to, to, to include um, your interests, really, and what, in, in, in what excites you in astronomy into and incorporate it, that into your shows, into your presentations. So I find that uh, quite exciting that you have that sort of control over your own presentation as well. So uh, I would say that that's probably, those are probably my two favorite things. And my other favorite thing is my team. I, <laughs> it, would, it, it sounds like a lie, I know. I, <laughs> It sounds like something that you would say just to make us look good, but actually the team is fantastic. It's a fantastic group of people. Uh, I think it's very unique, again, very unique to be in a team of astronomers uh, outside academia. Uh, I don't know anyone else uh, who has that kind of uh, uh, connection. Uh, and being in a team of people that are like-minded makes your job interesting, it makes your life interesting, and uh, it's, it, it gives you satisfaction, job satisfaction, of course, and happiness as well, because you get to talk about things that you're passionate about with people that uh, are also passionate about that. Um, it's not an academic environment, so you don't have that pressure of <laughs> academia. <laughs> um, and deadlines. Um, and, yeah, and, and so I think, and of course, you know, uh, because we all enjoy what we do and we, we, we are like-minded people, then I think that shows in how we uh, communicate with the public. So there's lots of different things that are quite unique and exciting about this kind of job. Well, thank you very much, Tanya. Uh, we're going to be back with more interviews from the rest of our astronomers very soon.